$24 billion currently floating in the sea off the coast of the Los Angeles ports. And that these very ports take in over 40% of all of the goods headed to the United States. Not only this, but these very ports are ranked among the least efficient ports in the entire world. And deeply impacting our industry. And deeply impacting our industry, this very port does not have any efficient or effective gas lane specifically dedicated to the food retail industry, home of many consumable, perishable, shelf life constrained raw materials and goods that our industry houses. Our port's efficiency is critical to our global supply chain, is critical to our supply chain here in the United States, and is especially critical to our industry, to the food retail industry. Today, we want to double look into these inefficiencies to see where potential opportunities may lie. Good morning, hello, my name is Molly Fleming from Ferrari Candy Company, and I am thrilled to have the opportunity to introduce to you today our team, Team Aerodynamics. With me today, I have Richard Cruz from Alice Foods Co., Judy Ortega from Mercate Market, Kelsey Swall from Car Safeway, Maria Romero from Spartan Final, and Matt Thompson from Randall's Elvis Today, we want to talk to you about our industry's supply chain. As I mentioned, there are many inefficiencies that are currently plaguing our supply chain that are deep rooted, they're difficult, they're grounded. Quite honestly, they're nearly intractable. The inefficiencies that are plaguing our supply chain really impact our industry given the perishability and consumability of the raw materials and products that we house. So today, we're going to explore the potential of coming together rather than working in silos as single companies. We're going to explore the possibility of cooperation, which is cooperating and then competing to bring our industry together. Today, we are proposing the creation of the National Grocer Supply Chain Alliance, an alliance created to first create and change regulations at our ports to create a specific fast lane dedicated to our industry, to the food retail industry. This fast lane, as I mentioned, would be dedicated to our industry, home of consumable, perishable raw materials and goods, and would take out key constraints and bottlenecks that our industry is currently facing. Today, we have a few topics that we want to cover. The first being the current state of the global supply chain. The second being core operations and where inefficiencies currently lie. And lastly, dive deeper into our recommendation and look at what exactly is the National Grocer Supply Chain Alliance and what are proposed changes in terms of regulations and fast track that we're looking to make. So first, in order to understand where we're going, we must understand where we've been and where we are currently with the current state global supply chain. We've experienced a rapid increase in supply chain costs related to distribution and transportation. We anticipate supply chain disruptions will continue for the foreseeable future. Our eyes are wide open to the many challenges we face putting pressure on economic recovery in some parts of the world and on supply chains globally. Uh, from a supply chain perspective, similar issues that we outlined both 12 and 24 weeks ago on the past quarterly earnings calls, uh, the, the factors pressuring supply chains and inflation include port delays, container shortages, COVID disruptions, shortages of various components and raw materials and ingredients and supplies. These increases were largely offset, however, by lower gross margin rates due to the rate impact of increased product costs driven by the current inflationary environment, as well as higher supply chain costs. The debate we've all, in, in the past, we had all said, with this degree of supply constraint, there is untapped growth. And we believe that still. We still believe that when supply comes back, there clearly is more growth. Our supply chain is in a fragile and delicate state, and although it worsened with the onset of COVID-19, it did not break into the pandemic. There are multiple factors that have heightened our awareness of the inefficiencies in supply chain. Our population is growing. We will increase by 2 billion people at the end of 2050 to reach 9 billion people. With the increase in population, there's also an increase in urbanization. 
This method built in the organization is the fact that consumers shop, what products they buy, and how they want those goods received. More and more consumers are buying products online more frequently, even multiple times a day. And this is adding more pressure to a ready product supply chain. Consumers are also spending more. Last year, consumer spending was 3.2% versus 2% in 2020. Large companies are working on consolidating multiple orders to a once-a-week delivery system just to reduce the number of packages from reaching our supply chain. A second factor affecting supply chain is the labor shortage. In January of this year, the Bureau of Labor Statistics reported that there were 11.2 million jobs that needed to be filled, so when I'm filled. The working shortage is being filled with our industry, from our grocery stores, our warehouse, manufacturing, and transportation. Companies are not able to hire the workers they need to fill those key positions, which is causing disruptions in our supply chain. This is not likely to be a better expression in the trucking industry. Right now, there's a shortage of 80,000 truck drivers. And that number is like, it's going to double by 2030, according to the American Trucking Association, to 160,000 truck drivers. To try to attract workers, many companies were forced to raise wages, which ultimately added additional costs to the companies and what translates is to higher prices for consumers. Another factor is transportation costs. Shipping container rates have skyrocketed. What used to cost $2,000 is now $15,000. Being an example, Southeast Asia rate to the West Coast port, port used to be $2,000 in May, and it's now $15,000 per 40 foot container. And this is like, the artists are likely to stay high, especially with the different geopolitical events going on the, around the world. Poor inefficiencies is another key factor affecting supply chain. 90% of our worldwide goods are shipped by an ocean freight. Focusing on increasing efficiencies in the ports will help us expedite the consumable goods we need for our industries. We are at a crisis in the United States from our California ports. We have some of the least efficient and lowest rate ports. Los Angeles is ranked 328 out of 351. Long Beach, 333 out of 351. This is a far cry from the top three in Saudi Arabia, Japan, and China. These ports, Los Angeles and Long Beach, are a crucial part of our supply chain. They take in 40% of all goods coming into the United States. We have some companies that are actually shipping their freight all the way to the East Coast to avoid these delays, trucking it back to the West Coast in order to get it in a more timely manner in order to meet our customer needs. Now, although we are ranked the worst, there is a couple things in place. The government has set aside $450 million in grant funds. This is an initiative to help the infrastructure to alleviate some of the congestion in Los Angeles and Long Beach ports. Unfortunately, we won't see that impact for another 10 to 15 years. There are two processes that are currently in place that have been in place for a while. CTCAT and BQIP. CTCAT is Customs Trade Protection Against Terrorism. This is a public public private sector partnership that was established in 2001 in order to protect the supply chain. Essentially, what happens is if you are a part of this, you have less scrutiny because you are a lower risk company, and so you get to uh, ports a little bit faster in the US import section. The second one is BQIP, Voluntary Qualified Import Program. This is an FDA program that charges a extremely high premium. And what this program does is it expedites the review of human and animal goods. So with these two programs, they've been in place pre-pandemic. Many of our companies are actually part of these right now. So what happens if we continue with these processes? We will continue to see production delays, operational inefficiencies, 
our competitors may gain market share, and we'll see financial strength. As you can see, we have no control over our products. We are all competitors in this room. And I know that none of you can wait long to compete. As we start our journey down as We are all competitors in this room. As you can tell, we have no control over our products. Solutions and technologies are light years away, and we know that none of you can wait that long. We are all competitors in this room, and however, competing in today's the way today is going is not going right. We must unite and create the National Grocers Supply Chain Alliance. On the alliance, we're asking that you, CEOs, presidents of retailers and CPG companies, uniting together to create the National Grocers Supply Chain Alliance. We have enlisted the National Grocers Supply, the National Grocers and the regional grocers to facilitate these meetings. So we can come up with ideas on the fast side. And you ask, what is the fast side? Jimmy? Imagine this. A vessel on the way to Long Beach, the port of Long Beach, arrives, and instead of waiting for police, thanks to the, the National Grocers Supply Chain Alliance, we're able to expedite our goods and get them from the ports to our distribution. So, as mentioned, how can we leverage swap too, right? This is a great idea, and I'll bring up two points. First, by leveraging competition, we're able to work with unions, work with the ports, work with government, work with us, the industry. But more importantly, we're going to be able to get uh, our customers to get some time. We're going to be able to get raw materials on time, perishing on package on time. And in the end, that's going to help us eliminate all the sauce, reduce all the sauce, and at the same time, increase revenue in the markets. The possibilities are endless. There's a few ideas that I just really came up with, and I'm going to share a few of those. Well, we'll be able to work on sustainability, we'll be able to work on reasonable development, and even create a mega port. Now, you might be thinking, a mega port might sound a little too like it's just too far fetched, but in this country, we can't create a mega port. We have a call Lindy, not a MyFi card. And we got Nipa, the National Market to Pause yet. It will be too costly because it will take too much time. Right now, when we're, when we're in crisis. So, what we learned is that when I look to our neighbors, we have Mexico. So, about 10 years ago, Cincinnati was going to build a mega port. But they got a job down. It wasn't a sign. But now, as we have Amazon, who's pretty much taking over the supply chain, we're capturing it. Want to do the same as you? So what we're here to see much recommend is to take advantage of us. Work with competition, be a source of aid to our industry, and who knows? There's a possibility that maybe we can get into a room. I the National Global Supply Chain Alliance. They come up with great ideas to help us and we some of these stresses. So as I mentioned, there are other possibilities that we counter your support. As our team Aerodynamics has talked about today, we've shared with you the current state of the ports today. 
or $24 billion worth of our goods. That's right, $24 billion worth of our goods are floating off the coast of LA right now as we speak. But more importantly, that 40% of the total supply chain that comes into America comes through the two ports of LA. We've also shared with you today about the inefficiencies at these two ports due to the productivity. And that creates the bottleneck that we face today in America. But what I'm recommending and what the team is recommending is the Grocer National Supply Chain Alliance. To where we grab the great minds that like these in this room today and use those and bring the best ideas to create it and to bring real change to the National Grocer Supply Chain Alliance through the supply chain. Through co-opetition, we work better together. And that's the only way we can bring it to bring the new fast lane at the ports what we need. So you're thinking, what do I do next? First, join the National Grocer Supply Chain Alliance. Second, stay committed to it with the meetings and bring your best ideas so that way it's not just us, it's we together to bring real solution. Third, partner with your local and state governments to bring real change and to bring the fast lane to life. I've always learned in my life from my great mentor, Troy Smith, there's three kinds of people. People make things happen, people watch things happen, people know what's happening. Which one are you? On behalf of Team Aerodynamics, I'd like to thank you for your time today and open it up for questions. So definitely a very important subject that affects each of us uh, severely, especially in the past two years. Uh, really, I, I think the question that I have and the elephant that's in the room is the union. There's currently a lot of different processes and programs and automation that's available right now to speed up the ports and to improve the ports uh, uh, 50, 60 percent easily. And yet there are choices being made to not do that. What will you do to partner with the unions to actually impact this change, to make this actually happen? Sure. So, thank you for your question. Um, we talked a lot about the incentive, obviously, to right, ban all the different pieces of together, and knowing that the unions would be um, an important piece of work with. We did um, talk about incentives a little bit. Um, I'm sure exactly what that would look like, but definitely we need their support in order for right this this program and the regulations to make sure. Uh, thank you for your presentation. I was wondering if you could elaborate on the government officials uh, that you would press upon, that you would get the National Grocers Supply Chain Alliance to really meet with and work with. Who are the key decision makers that could really affect change and how quickly you think that change could come about? Ron Fong. So we partnered with uh, Ron Fong from the California Drug Association. And then our local government will be the Board of Supervisors, and then our local senators who are the We would utilize them in co op or in our meetings, and we would have them help also model for that. If, if I was a person running for government, and I could tell my constituents that I would get them groceries or the product they needed faster, I would definitely use that in my campaign in the next term. So utilizing those, those people, I think, 